Hey fam. Yes, I'm back. Thanks to you guys, I'm back. I just bit my lip. Y'all can't see it bleeding on camera because it literally feels like it is bleeding. But anyway, yeah, happy Wednesday. Wait, it's Tuesday or Wednesday? Whew. Wednesday afternoon. Did I say Tuesday this morning? I hope I said Wednesday. Anyway, because it's Wednesday. It is not Tuesday. But um, yeah, welcome back to the afternoon vlog. Thank you guys so, 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 so. I can't say it enough. Just so much for subscribing. Like, thank you. Like, I really do not take that for granted. I really, really, really don't take it for granted that you stay, you watch the videos, you subscribe, you turn your notification bell on and all that stuff. I just don't know how to express that so I have to say it every time I come on and for those of you who are still here from day one my heart my heart seriously my heart and for commenting you guys are really helping me like pulling me up out of this funk where I feel sometimes and felt like recently that I didn't have any content ideas so it really helps when you guys thumbs up number one because I normally ask questions um, do you want me to finish this topic? Do you want me to go over this? So it helps when I go back and look through the video. Oh wait, what did I ask them? And I realize I do that because I see the likes. I see all, you know, the number of likes. And I'm like, okay, I said something or asked something in this video. Let me make sure I go ahead and cover the topic because I did that, ask a question and you guys respond. And I love when that happens because it, it really does help. So you guys have pulled me up out of another funk and I do appreciate it so to jump right into this video I want to talk about the um, the most important thing what do you guys think the most important what is the most important step in drawing blood think about that for a second outside of that I'm going to answer that question I want to also say that I saw a perfect comment about bloodborne pathogens which I hardly ever talk about I know I've gone over I know I've gone over standard precautions and universal precautions so all of the patch of pathogens we'll talk about the airborne pathogens the um, contact not pathogens your precautions so all of your bloodborne pathogens we're going to talk about and those are going to consist of precautions for your airborne your contact and your droplet um, precautions and things what you should and should not do what you should wear what you should look for and you know vice versa so that's going to be the next video if you're interested in that please thumbs up that's what I mean by that so when you thumbs up I know okay so it was a video about what is the most important step in drawing blood but I did ask the question about bloodborne pathogens so I'll talk about that in the next video that's why I want that so the most important step in drawing blood whether you're inpatient or outpatient I hope you guys got it right I hope you commented while I was talking did you don't don't change it either don't don't read don't take it do not remove it I need to see what your answers are the most important step in drawing blood is patient identification who got it right just thumb just that you know just thumbs up if I see a hundred thumbs up I'll know it's for the next topic and for those of you who got the question right yes patient identification of course it's very important to stick stick properly bevel up all that good stuff but if you're doing all of that and you stick the wrong patient, what good was it? What good was bevel up? None at all. So the most important thing for inpatient and outpatient is patient identification. I know I've gone over patient identification before, but what I really want to say is when you're drawing a patient and you call a patient back, never draw if there is a discrepancy with the name. If it's supposed to be brown with the E on the end and they don't have it, it needs to go back to the front or to registration or wherever. You need to call the help desk or whomever we call and have that fixed. Same thing, if there's there's not an E or vice versa, have it fixed. Have it have it. Um, data healthy that's what we do here so yes the other thing is maybe a middle initial but on the driver's license the name is spelled out it may be the middle initial um, K 
and on the driver's license, the middle initial is Kathy, but you only have the K. That is unacceptable. That's a discrepancy. It really is because you want the full name. Whatever's on a patient's identification should be in the computer, should be in registration, and should print on your labels. There's any type of discrepancy because we can't guess. It needs to go back. So yes, I know we talk about it and we say name, date of birth, medical record number, whatever. So know with your facility what the protocol is. There are usually three identifiers for us. It is first name, last name, med rec number. So make sure you do that. First name, last name, date of birth, I'm sorry. First name, last name, date of birth, med rec number. Date of birth is very important. And that name is very important because you could have um, the same name and the same date of birth and you know they could both be females so what's going to separate them a med rec number and sometimes and or the fin number which is a financial number so you have to check everything you must you must you must I know a lot of you are concerned about the stick what about the stick I can't get the blood I'm pulling back I'm going in make sure you have the right patient first because all that's not going to matter if you don't <laughs> so it all applies to inpatient and outpatient and yeah it doesn't matter um, some places ask for addresses. I'm not sure if that's a Quest thing, a LabCorp thing. Comment down below if any of you have to ask for the address, a patient's address. We don't do that. It could be in some clinic or if you're in registration. And of course, if you're in registration, yes. But if you're in the lab, all of that should already have been handled. And you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't need social security numbers. Um, you should never ask that and you should never really need an address because you're not in registration. You're just needing the three identifiers that um, are required for lab. So make sure you understand that, make sure you do that because all else does not matter if you don't have the right patient or the right patient's blood or specimen or etc. whatever it is. So do that and you'll be a great phlebotomist or lab tech or lab professional, hands down. So thumbs up this video, guys. Please let me know what you want to see next. Please keep the comments coming. It really helped today when I looked through the comments and I was like, wow, thanks. I really needed that. So continue to do that. I will be back um, in the morning and uh, I'll go through the comments and pull some stuff out and go ahead and get that started first thing tomorrow. So I'm going to go. It's time to go home. It's after three. I will see you guys later. Bye.